to Community Health TV, powered by Community Therapy, DVTs. Do you know what a DVT is or what it stands for? Deep vein thrombosis. Many people have heard about that term in their life or may have uh, suffered a DVT and been treated for it. They are a medical emergency and can result in further complications if the DVT dislodges in your body and that blood clot moves and lodges in lung or brain in particular. So for our clinicians out in the field, any medical professional, health uh, professional, allied health professional, we're always on the lookout for things such as DVTs, which we would refer to clinically as red flags. We're clearing for red flags to then make sure there's nothing sinister when we're seeing somebody so we can move on to normal therapy. When may we see a DVT? For, for our team, it's typically a physiotherapist out in the field supporting somebody um, after an acute surgery, often with our rehab at home services, post total knee or total hip replacement. We are on the lookout for DVTs. How do we do that as a team? Clinically, we're looking for things that uh, predominantly in the lower limb, uh, distal, or which means in uh, medical terms, uh, further away uh, from the center, so distal uh, to the knees, so typically in the lower limb, where we're looking for swollen, hot, red, and painful um, calves, typically. There are many other symptoms and, and signs that we look for. Uh, we often refer to something called the Wells criteria, and you can punch that into Google, or God forbid you're using Microsoft Edge, um, type that into Wells criteria and have a look, and it gives us a bit of a framework to look through clinically of uh, giving us a score of how much of a risk someone is. Some of the things it looks like, it looks at uh, a measurement of left versus right, if there's greater than a three centimeter uh, difference in calf circumference, starts to raise a little bit of a red flag for us in that criteria. That can be a little bit difficult if people have had um, both limbs operated on. We then um, may struggle with a correct left versus right um, difference, but we still take it into factor. Superficial veins showing differently, uh, tem tenderness through the deep venous, uh, venous system through the body, uh, the lower limbs, pitting edema. What does pitting edema look like? Typically it's in the foot, we would call that pedal edema, so pedal for foot. When you would press into the foot or along typically the, the tibia of the lower limb and you'll see an imprint still left, that's telling us that the body isn't clearing uh, fluid uh, through the lymphatic system, but the venous system will, also has a very big part to play in fluid dynamics, pumping up against gravity. And that's starting to tell us that there's compromise possibly in fluid management, and that could be from a DVT. Uh, many other things in the Wells criteria, we go through all of that, spits out a score to us in combination with our clinical um, suspicion. Um, we're able to then determine, is this person high risk of a DVT and should we have an investigation? What sort of investigation? It's usually an ultrasound, which we would refer to as a type of ultrasound being a Doppler to look at the blood flow to then diagnose a clot. If a clot, a DVT is diagnosed, we need to treat it so that we don't get that escalation flowing on to possibly that breaking off, lodging in lung, lodging in uh, brain, risk of stroke, etc. So how is it treated? Usually blood thinner or what we would call an anticoagulant. Sometimes may be hospital admission with IV, sometimes may be then long-term use of a medication such as warfarin, a blood thinner. Um, what do we do after that is the next question. I'm glad you asked. It's typically lifestyle modification for somebody, especially if somebody suffered a DVT in the presence of not an acute event. So if somebody's had a surgery, there's often a reason for that to have occurred, but in the presence of nothing, we're always looking at lifestyle modification as well, because it may be related to physical inactivity and, and dietary um, intake as well. So the right healthcare professionals to consider after engaging with primary healthcare, GP and hospital for management of the DVT, 
would be looking for a dietitian to review um, what you're eating and your whole interaction with food and then physiotherapy looking at um, engaging with physical activity to improve strength improve mobility and also um, get the advent the advantage of uh, the other care needs that we can help as physios as well somebody might be an older adult and we might be able to also help you with falls preventions etc hopefully that's helped with some information about dbt and you can be on the lookout for that amongst yourself and friends and family they're definitely rare however across the healthcare system we're always looking out for them thanks so much and we'll see you next time